In our transformations unit, we have already seen just the plain absolute value function. We know what its graph looks like. And we've done transformations with that graph. What we're going to look at now is saying, what would happen if we put in any function inside the absolute value? What would that do? How do we graph it? And what would that final graph look like? Well, you know that the absolute value takes whatever's inside and makes it positive. So the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. And the absolute value of something that's already positive, like the absolute value of 7, it stays the same and it's still 7. So what we're going to find out is we're going to use similar steps that we did for rational graphs and square root graphs. We're going to graph the inside function first and then think the only thing that's going to change is all negative y values will become positive. So if we're looking at the graph of y equals the absolute value of f of x, what's going to happen since all negative y values will become positive is your entire graph is going to be above the x-axis. So I'm going to make up an example one. We're going to graph the absolute value of x squared minus 4. So we start off by looking at the inside function, which is x squared minus 4. You know how to graph that from transformations. How would you describe that graph with transformations? Parabola that's been moved 4 down. So if we were Labeling its vertex, it's going to be at 0, negative 4. Are you okay if I label the x-intercepts at negative 2, 0, and 2, 0? If I plugged in another point, we'd have 3, comma 5. And so now what we're going to do over here is we're going to graph the absolute value of x squared minus 4. And we're going to go through that idea that the only thing that's going to change is all negative y values are going to become positive. So if we just look at some of the points that I've labeled, I only have one point labeled that has a negative y value, 0, negative 4. So where's that point going to go? it's going to change to 0, comma, positive 4. Because when you take the absolute value of that, that's going to change. Now, what would happen when I take the absolute value of 2, comma, 0? That point, well, absolute value of 0 would stay 0. And what's going to happen if I take the absolute value of the y-coordinate at 3, comma, 5? It's still going to be 3, comma, 5. So what's going to happen? Well, if we think of this graph and we look at this graph, can you see that this is the section where the y values are negative? Between negative 2 and 2. I'm going to put negative 2, 0 on there. And if I make all of those values positive, what that's going to do to that part of that graph is going to just reflect it or flip it over the x-axis. So this part of the graph becomes flipped up like that. And everywhere where it was positive, the absolute value is not going to change anything. And so this section is still going to be like the parabola was before. And we get 
a graph that kind of looks like the letter W. So what we do in the graphing any absolute value function is we graph the original function and whatever's below the x-axis is just going to get reflected up to become positive. So it's going to only change part of the graph and not the entire graph. So here's a question that we could do using transformations, but we're going to do it using our new technique, which is doing the absolute value. So we want to do the absolute value of 2x plus 3. If I graph 2x plus 3 to begin with, well, that's a straight line. It has a y-intercept of 3. It has a slope of 2, up 2 over 1. And this is our graph. If I label some more points on there, a key point when doing the absolute value is going to be our x-intercepts, because that's where things change from being positive y values to negative y values. What is our x-intercept here? Something comma zero. Negative three over two. How do we find that? Well, you could plug in 0 plug in 0 for y and solve for x and you'll find out that you'll get negative 3 over 2. Now when we go to graph the absolute value, It's this part of our graph where the y values are negative. So that part of our graph, for example, a point on that part of our graph is this one right here. We've got negative 2, negative 1. And the absolute value is going to take that negative y value and make it positive. So we're going to have the point negative 2 comma positive 1. And this part that's highlighted is going to get reflected over our x-axis. The other part that was already positive will stay positive. And this is the graph whoa, it's a little bit of a bendy absolute value. There we go. That's the graph of y equals the absolute value of 2x plus 3. Now thinking back to transformations, because that was our very first unit. What does the 2 do? Does it affect x values or y values? It's going to affect x values because it's inside the absolute value. And what would you do with that? You'd multiply your x values by? 1 half. Perfect. And what does that 3 do? Does it move it 3 to the left? It doesn't look like my graph was moved 3 to the left. Why didn't that happen? You have to write it in. If you were using transformations, we have a horizontal compression and a horizontal translation. This would have to be written in factored form. So you would have to multiply your x values by a half, and then you would have to move everything 3 or 1.5 3 over 2, 1 1.5 to the left. And so in this situation, I think that our new technique of drawing the graph inside and just flipping what's ever negative over is easier than our old technique of transformations. But now you have two ways that you could graph this one. One, using your transformation technique, start with your absolute value, compress it horizontally, then shift it 1.5 to the left, or draw the inside function wherever the y values are negative, flip it over the x-axis.
So here's another one. Sometimes you can be given the graph. Here, you could have graphed this on your own because this is polynomial. It's already factored for you. So you would have known that the x-intercepts are at 0, negative 3, and at 2. And from chapter 1, polynomials, can you see that this is an x-cubed graph, a positive x-cubed graph? So the end behavior acts like a positive line. So it starts down here and ends up over here. Now, we wouldn't know how high it goes or how low it goes, where the maximum and minimum are, but this would be the general shape of that cubic function with those x-intercepts. So if we wanted to graph the absolute value of this, we have to find out where our y values are negative. So I'm going to highlight that again. And what's going to happen to those values? They're going to get reflected over the x-axis. And everything that's not highlighted, that's where your y values are already positive, those sections are going to stay the same. And that would be our graph, the blue one, would be our graph of the absolute value of that function.